The parking tools in the vehicle tracking application aren't just for creating stripes. They can also be used to design a parking lot layout. In this session, we'll use the tools to develop a small parking lot design. As you can see, I have a drawing open on screen. This file is called 03 Parking Design. In this drawing, I have the beginnings of a parking lot layout. Generally speaking, I have the overall shape of the lot. I have a pair of buildings surrounded by sidewalks, and I've identified three potential entrance locations. Now, as a design requirement, we need to have at least 175 parking stalls in this lot to support this retail space. Let's see if we can do that. I'm going to start by visiting the Vehicle Tracking tab. Then I'll load a parking standard. I'm going to load the same parking standard we used earlier. I'm not going to make this the default. I'll click OK to accept the default name, and then I'll click OK to accept the current drawing settings. I'll start by creating parking stalls along the east side. I'm going to turn on my running object snap, and I will snap to this upper right end point. I will then snap to the PC and PT of the curve. Let's come over and put the bays on the right side only, and I'll snap to the end of the line. When I'm finished, I'll right click. I will then select the arrow grip and I'll pull this out into a curve and snap it to the edge of pavement. Next, let's create some parking stalls across the front of the building. I'll go back to the new row button. I'll set this for right only and I'll snap from one end of the sidewalk to the other. Now to create the bays on the other side, I'm going to click the lower half of this icon and choose parallel row. Using this tool, I can create a parking row that is parallel to an existing row. Since the other row was already selected, you can see all I have to do is place this on screen. Note that I can only drag this a certain distance from the other row. That's because you are not allowed to violate the dimensions of the drive aisle. This is actually perfect. I'll click to accept, and then I'll click again to put the bays to the inside. Let's launch the parallel command again, and I'll create a parallel row on the south side of the buildings and I'll put the bays to the outside. I'll click it again and I'll create another row as close to the other one as possible. This time I'd like the bays on both sides. I will then zoom out and we'll take a closer look. In the middle of the lot, I have some geometry representing a proposed drive aisle. Currently I have a line segment representing the center line of the aisle. I'm going to select this, I'll hover over the grip on the end and I'll use the lengthen option to pull this through the lot. Then I'll move up to the parking panel and I'll use the Create Access Road from Line command. I'd like this access road to have a custom width. I'll choose 26 and click OK. The access road is then used to divide the existing rows. Now that I've split this row on the south side, I'm going to select it. I'll come up and use the Edit Parking Row button. I'll put these bays to the right side only, and I'll press Enter. Let's pan the drawing over and we'll take a look at the entrance on the west side. Here we'll create another access road. I'll select the line, I'll hover over the grip and click lengthen, and I'll pull this into the lot. Note there's also an option to create access road by picking points on screen. If I use this, I can select one endpoint and the other to create an access road. This will also have a custom width of 26, and I'll click OK. Let's zoom out, we'll pan the drawing over. The only place left to correct is the access road coming around the southeast of the lot. Now, I wish I could use the Access Road tool to clean this up, but unfortunately the tool only works with straight segments. So we're going to have to fix this the old-fashioned way. I'm going to zoom in. I'll select this row and right-click, and I'll use the Display Order option to send this to the back. This gives me access to the geometry. I will then offset this edge to identify the boundary of the access road. I know that the parking bays are 18 feet deep. The access road should be 26. So I'll go to the Home tab, I'll launch the Offset command, and then for my distance, I'll press Control 8 to bring up the calculator. I'll type 18 plus 26 equals. I'll click Apply to apply that value to the current command, and I'll press Enter. I will then select the edge of the parking lot, and I'll offset that in. Then I'll zoom in, and I'm going to turn off the running object snaps momentarily so they don't get in the way. I'll select this parking row, and I'll use the Extend Row tool to pull this back such that it's within the boundary. I will then pan up, grab the outside diamond grip to pull this island over, and then I'll use the corresponding grip on the other side to take care of the other island. When I'm finished, I'll press Escape, and I'll delete the unnecessary entity. So this looks to be the maximum number of stalls we can fit in this lot. Let's find out how many we have. To do that, I'll go up to the Vehicle Tracking tab, and in the Parking panel, I'll click the Parking Report button. And when the report comes up, I can see there are 188 stalls, so this is perfect. Let me click Close, 
and let's look at how we can create some handicapped stalls. I'm going to zoom in on this building on the east, and to convert some of these bays to handicapped, I'll come up and use the Edit Parking Bay tool. I will then select the row. This brings up the Parking Bay properties. As I move my cursor back and forth, you can see the various bays highlighting. I can click to select the one I'm interested in, and then in the dialog box, I'll change the style to disabled, and I'll click OK. Now if I'd like additional disabled stalls, while still in the command I can click the disabled stall. This populates the dialog box with the current value. I will then come down and choose copy to, and I'll click another stall, and another, and another. When I'm finished I'll press escape a couple times to clear the screen. Now that I've made this change, let's see how it affects the parking report. When the report comes up now, we can see how many normal and disabled stalls we have, as well as a total count and a percentage of each type. To export this data, we can use the Export button. Using this option, we can save the file using several common formats. I'm going to close this. I'll zoom out and we'll center the lot on screen. Let's assume I was creating a parking exhibit and I wanted to number the stalls in each row. To do that, I'll select a row. Then I'll bring up the Edit Parking Row Tools. In the dialog box, next to Base Style, I'll click the Ellipsis button. And in the Base Styles dialog box, I'll choose Number Bay, and I'll click OK. I will then drag this dialog box up, and I'll click OK. I'll press Escape, and I'll do a quick regen to update the other rows. When I zoom in, you can see there's 17 stalls in this row, 20 stalls in this row, 10 in this one, and so on. Finally, I'd like to test this parking lot design. I'll start by zooming in on the north part of the lot, and then I'll do a swept path analysis. I'll click the Auto Drive Arc tool, and then in the library I'll drag to the bottom. If we expand the pool for the current drawing, I have already included a passenger car in this file. I'll select it and click Proceed. Note that when you hover the car near a stall, it automatically snaps into the bay. I'm going to click to select this one, and then I'll drive using the Pick Alignment tool. I'd like to pull out parallel to this building. We'll drive down to the end of the aisle. I'll use Pick Alignment, and I'd like to pull out parallel to the center of the drive. I'll use Pick Alignment again, and I'll exit the lot parallel to the center line of the road. When finished, I'll right-click and press Escape. As you can see, using the vehicle tracking tools, it only takes minutes to conceptualize and test a parking lot design.